guys, Justin from Patriot Campers. Welcome to 2024 and welcome to the brand new manufacturing facility for Patriot Campers right here on the Gold Coast. If you've been following us on uh, social media, you notice we've just gone through the past couple of months, a massive project to consolidate uh, three separate factories and put everything back under one roof. I've got all my skills back together now, right next door behind this wall here. Uh, we are actually back producing camper trailers. We got the production line up and going uh, over the Christmas period. And it's a really exciting time for Patriot Campus because it's a complete reset of the business. Um, we've just gone through the introduction of Gen 2. Gen 2 is now in uh, the market. Gen 1 is behind us. And I wanted to really show everybody through the improvements behind the scenes. Besides the aesthetics, the things that you'd notice that have changed, I really want to take everyone through uh, the things that they probably wouldn't say. So we're going to give you a little bit of an in-depth look into what makes up a Patriot camper. Now this chassis here um, that I'm really going to be focusing on today, this was actually the chassis that we used for destructive testing when we launched Gen 2 or prior to the launch of Gen 2. So the Australian standards uh, have changed for the better a couple of years ago. Um, they've gotten a lot stricter now when it comes to engineering, FEA analysis, and structural certificates on all towable items, which for the Australian manufacturing sector has been amazing. It's taken a lot of the imported uh, products out of the market, the ones that really shouldn't have been here. But if you know me and you know the brand, you can't beat Australian made. So what the engineers do is they actually set up a jig and they put the chassis into the jig and they try and destroy it, hence the reason destructive testing. When the chassis came back with its uh, certificate, and this was the only one that we set up, um, so we got it right the first time with uh, the, the FEA analysis that we did in CAD, nothing failed on the chassis, which was absolutely amazing. The chassis came back, I was walking past the factory, what's that frame over there? Oh, that's the one we sent for destructive testing. Perfect, let's clear code it. Let's assemble a chassis and put it right here in the new showroom to really show everybody what is the heart of a Patriot camper. I'll probably start by saying 366 kilos, as you see it here, it weighs, and that's everything below the chassis. So when you look at the X range, and depending on the model that you choose and depending on the options, you're gonna be circa about 40% of the total tear weight in a Patriot camper is sitting below the chassis. This is where all the structure sits. This is everything that gets hammered when you're traveling on those remote destination outback roads. From day one, that's been a big objective behind the design, the center of gravity of the trailer, keeping it as low as possible. Hence the aluminum uh, body set, which sits above this, which I'll go into a little bit later on. So when you see a Patriot camper on those crazy angles behind any of the stuff that you might watch on Patriot games, or if, if you're uh, one of the owners, um, you'll know, and I'll get the feedback um, from all the owners all the time, that they just get blown away by some of the situations that they can get this camper trailer into um, without rolling it over. And that's something that I'm extremely proud of. The chassis is all steel. So everything below the chassis, the main actual frame is welded. And then we have, we have some sub components that are structurally riveted. And again, I'll go into that a little bit later on in the design, or they're bolted to the main frame. So we use a 100 by 50 by three mil uh, RHS uh, section. This product comes in from Australian tube mills and it's actually laser cut by my brother on his rotary axis machine. Now, what would happen after that welding process was complete is the chassis would then go up for hot dip galvanizing um, up in Brisbane. So when we laser cut the products, uh, we notch and tab all of the tubes together. So the sections actually interlock before they're even welded. Now the hot dip galvanizing, everybody knows that the galvanizing is for corrosive purposes. And yeah, that is its, its primary function. The primary function of the hot dip galvanizing is to ensure that we get a nice even zinc coating. With the hot dip galvanizing, it actually keys into the material, very similar to powder coat. You'll notice a lot of specifically the import, imported products, and I'm not picking on imported products in this video, but I'll just give some people a couple of pointers on, on what to look out for. A Duragal painted chassis is not the same as hot dip galvanizing. Duragal is a sprayed on coating, it's a paint. The paint doesn't rust, but if you scratch that paint, what goes on underneath there is obviously you get the oxidization and eventually that forms rust. With hot dip galvanizing, that's very, very unlikely. 
The coating is, is very, very strong. So one of its other uh, functions is to protect the frame from stone chips, debris, and all the rest of it. Hence the reason we don't paint over the top of the galvanizing. But I think one of the most important parts that people might not realize um, is the annealing of the welds. So when you go and heat the welds, um, you're actually, you're putting heat into the welded section. Uh, the outside sections of the tube uh, remain cold. When they go and heat it up in the zinc bath, they heat the material evenly right across. And what that does is it anneals the weld, it relieves the stress around the welds, which means over longevity or a longer time period, you've got a much, much, much less chance of fatigue eventually creating a crack in those welds. I'm still very, very proud to say, uh, still to the day now, and we're coming up on 10 years of manufacturing, um, we still haven't had a structural claim on the frame of a Patriot camper and we offer a five-year structural warranty. At the rear of the trailer on the Gen 2, uh, really noticeable change, and that was really based on departure angle and off-road ability. With the Gen 1s, uh, in extreme situations, going up a big incline, uh, you had one of the aluminium outriggers that supported uh, the body set, they could get damaged, and they did get damaged. I would love to see somebody damage this. So we've got a massive rock slider at the back, a uh, big tube at the back. We've moved the tail lights up a little bit higher into the body set. Uh, so there is no chance of them being damaged. Um, rear recovery points at the back, one here and one on that side. Uh, you got 1,750 kilos per point at a max angle of 45 degrees or three and a half tonnes uh, total. If you want to run the pair of them together, you run a bridle around the back. And the centre recovery point uh, that you see in here is rated to 80 kilos of downward pressure, um, which is more than enough to put a, uh, a push bike carrier on the back and three or four bikes. Going through the centre of the trailer, spare tyre is tucked up underneath. Uh, we put on a space saver. Typically speaking, I reckon I could count on one hand with all the trips that I've done with the Patriot, how many tyres that I've actually changed. Being that that tear weight is so low, um, they're not as uh, susceptible to punches or flats or tearing tyres as your vehicle would be. So one spare is more than enough. Six on 139 stud pattern, so most of your dual cab utes. The water tanks you'll see are integrated right into the chassis. Now the water tanks are a custom part developed, uh, designed by my team here at Patriot Campus, but manufactured by one of the, the premier, I suppose, tank suppliers right here in Brisbane. So about an hour from the Patriot Campus factory. They're a rotor molded product, so you do get some variables when it comes to the wall thickness. Uh, we aim for nine mil, but in most cases, they can get up to 10, 11, 12 mil, especially on the radiuses inside the corners. You'll notice that the water tanks are integrated into the chassis uh, on the Gen 2 frame. Now they're a fully custom designed uh, tank that has been designed to package right into the center of the trailer. And again, get that center of gravity, that weight of water when you're putting you know, 140 odd liters in there over the center axle. And that really helps control the balance. They're a UV stabilized polyethylene, so they're a food grade material, um, which is exactly the same as all of the water fittings the hoses and the plumbing that you'll see right throughout the camper trailer um, to ensure that A, they're safe, they don't hold any bacteria, but also removes that plasticky taste that you might get out of um, some other products. Now sitting right beside either side of the water tanks, obviously is the suspension arm. Now this is the X-Cruise product that is manufactured by Cruise Master. Again, another very well-known, very reputable uh, company here in Australia. But this was actually designed six odd years ago by Patriot Campers. We did all the prototyping on it, and then we went to Cruise Master with the prototype, and they refined the design and they've been manufacturing it for us ever since. Now, the reason that we went to this suspension system, and I do get asked that a lot, why don't we use one of the off-the-shelf products? is again, the tear weight on the Patriot Campers product. Obviously, we wanna aim for the lowest tear weight possible. The products that were available, and they're still available from Cruise Master, uh, aimed at much, much heavier tear weights and dual axle products. And it was substantial over-engineering to suit what we were doing in the early days. So this product has worked absolutely amazingly for us, but for Gen 2, uh, we've made some upgrades. We've seen over the years, there's been a handful of trailers that have shared stub axles. Uh, majority of have been, uh, have been in, in uh, situations where they've been below zero temperatures. Now, the load that we expect our customers to put onto the camper trailer is really the, the purpose of the suspension. So what we've done for this year for Gen 2 and moving forward 
is we've upgraded the stub axle um, from a 35 millimeter diameter up to a 41 millimeter diameter. Uh, and just as importantly, we've changed the offset of the wheels um, to take that load more inboard and put it back onto the suspension arm and not obviously have it uh, cantilevering too far out from the suspension arm, which again, would put excessive stress over time on the stub axle. Uh, we've also upgraded and we've gone as standard now as a 12 inch drum brake over the 10 inch. Uh, we, the trailers have gotten a little bit heavier with all the automation and we've noticed a lot more people now are taking a lot more gear. What people are loading into camper trailers now and especially around electronics seems to be the thing. 2,000, 3,000 watt inverters, the demand on power now means that people are taking more gear with them. So we've given an increased payload uh, for Gen 2 as well, which has been something that's been amazing. Roll sleeve airbags, uh, the roll sleeve airbags we introduced uh, with the x Cruise over a convoluted airbag. Convoluted airbag is the, the Gen 1 style or what you'd see under the back of a semi-trailer or a truck stay, for example, with the roll sleeve bag. You can see we've got a tuned piston right down the bottom down here. And what that means is as that piston moves uh, through the stroke of the airbag with a convoluted airbag, once you set a pressure in a convoluted bag, that's ultimately your spring rate. Your spring rate's fixed. Uh, irrelevant of what pressure you have in here is that roll sleeve moves up and down through the piston. It's adjusting the pressure inside of the bag. And what that's fundamentally doing is giving you a progressive spring rate. So when the trailer goes into bump, the spring rate gets a little bit heavier. And you'll notice if you would have seen some of our videos or some of those astute guys might have picked up. If you look at the early videos of a Gen 1 going down a bumpy track compared to a Gen 2, uh, the ride is just light years ahead um, with that roll sleeve airbag. Um, so we're really, really proud of this design. We've also got adjustments at the front. So we've got adjustments for tow and camber. Um, and look, really with the manufacturing processes that we have now and being a trailing arm and a trailing arm is fixed, we did have the discussions internally about whether we have even needed suspension adjustments because we have such a high accuracy with the laser cutting and the jigging uh, in the chassis. One of the things that throws that out is the galvanizing process, depending on what temperature they set the bar, what time of day they do it. You can see some uh, distortion in the frame, but typically we'll let the frame settle for up to four weeks uh, out the back before they'll go into manufacture. But the real main priority for that adjustment in the suspension arms is again, the Patriot campers theory of pushing the trailer as hard as possible. You know, if you're going down a track with overgrown grass, you hit a stump or collect a rock, and the trailer gets knocked out of adjustment, what that's gonna allow it to do is exactly that. Push out of adjustment and not shock load a component that ultimately would bend, fatigue, crack, or break. And we see a lot of that when we're traveling in, in remote destinations. You'll notice some other things around the camper trailer, like the mud guard brackets or anything that's gonna be you know, really exposed to the elements, uh, galvanized sheet and not powder coated mild steel, say for example. Obviously we need that structure of, of steel and stainless steel in some areas of the design because aluminium just doesn't have that yield strength. It just doesn't cut it. Any of the parts that we use that are steel that don't go through the galvanizing product, we have a very, very uh, controlled process internally when it comes to sandblasting and removing the mill scale, say for example, off the black material. So the powder coat has something to bond into and etch into. Moving up the front, obviously DO35 hitch. Uh, the drawbar from a manufacturing perspective, uh, the drawbar is still a bolt-on drawbar, but at this point in time, we only offer it in one length. So the overall length of the Gen 2 uh, is the same as a Gen 1 trailer with an extended drawbar. So with the Gen 2, I suppose you could say that you really do get an extended drawbar as standard. It's about 200 millimeters longer, um, which doesn't affect the off-road ability when you're going down a track but where you'll really notice that come into play is when you're reversing. The geometry at the front from the uh, front box has been specifically designed to be able to swing the trailer past 90 degrees. And that was based on a two meter wide vehicle. So say for example, any of your Ram US trucks or a 200 series Land Cruiser. And that was a big requirement of me. I don't want to ever unhitch my trailer if I don't have to. And generally speaking, um, I, I do push it too hard and I'll find myself in situations that I'm, I'm really proud of the design and what we've learnt uh, over the 10 years of, of Patriot Campus. Dual shocks is probably the only other thing that, that I didn't mention. And the dual shocks, I get asked that question a lot. What's the purpose of the dual shocks? It's redundancy. It's really just simply that. The shocks are valved based on having two shocks. 
But in that remote situation, if you did blow out one shock, you do have another one there that can take over. And that's really what it's always been about for us. The shocks are valved right, and the piston and the airbag is tuned right. One shock is more than sufficient, but when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're days away from any help blowing a shock, um, can definitely be a bit of a problem. That's a run through of the frame. Like I said, the main component of the Patriot. I'll probably take you guys over to a, a, a little bit of the electrical stuff and, um, and let's run through a bit of that. Wiring harness, some of the components. We've taken this out of uh, straight off the production line before coming over here. Now, again, if you're familiar with the brand, this is not my jam. I employ people that are much, much smarter than me when it comes to electrical. Fabrication, sheet metal, that's, that's my background and that's my passion. But I'll tell you some of the things that I do know. Um, we work with two amazing suppliers, absolutely amazing suppliers here in Australia, uh, focusing on the Australian made component of the Patriot Campus. The wiring harnesses are produced right here on the Gold Coast uh, by Helm. Uh, Helm are a, a wiring loom company that are doing some really amazing stuff in the, in the caravanning and the, and the camper trailer industry. As far as wiring harness suppliers go, it's always been our Achilles heel from day one. Uh, wiring harnesses are very, very labour intensive, very labour intensive. And we've searched high and low for a machine that we can just put cable in at one end and get out a wiring harness at the other. And we haven't found it. And the stuff that we were looking to procure, um, the capital expense has just been ridiculous, over the top. Helm have made that investment and they've completely transformed our business as far as wiring harness suppliers go. The wiring harnesses are becoming very, very complex in everything, you know, from your vehicle to a caravan to a boat. Uh, and the pinouts are, are generally the, the, the biggest cause of issues on our production line. If we go and plug a wiring harness in, something doesn't work. Tracing that back to the source um, can take more time than what that work centre is allocated to do that particular job. Now, all of the quality components that they use, again, is very heavily Australian focused. For example, all of the cable is Australian made cable. So it's all sourced from a mine right here in Queensland and then manufactured in Australia. And same with the coverings. So all of the coverings over the wiring harnesses is all Australian made products. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on. Uh, we've done a lot of, the engineering department have done a lot of work when it comes to say the connectors that are internally, like MCP connectors, the utilization of Deutsch plugs, say for example. Um, a Deutsch plug, if you're not familiar, is, is a waterproof uh, product that was originally military, and then it was very heavily used in the racing scene. Um, and now it's transferred into very high level and majority of Australian manufacturers, I think now are using them. How many people have done a creek crossing with a camper trailer or their vehicle and lost lights or something shorted out or worst case, there's been a fire. Uh, Deutsch plugs, say for example, uh, replace bullet connectors. And each one of these plugs, a four pin is about $7. A six pin is $10. And when you consider how many are uh, throughout the camper trailer, all of those costs uh, kind of add up. So uh, as, as far as the electrical goes, we're supplying the schematics and we have very, very, very few warranty uh, claims when it comes to electrical components. The second part of that is obviously these guys right here, Red Arc. Um, we've been with Red Arc from day one and there is, we are exclusively Red Arc. Any product that we can fit into any of our designs that's electronic, that Red Arc manufacture, that's the company that we go with. They're Australian made for Australian conditions, which resonates right throughout the world. The testing that they do down in Adelaide on all of their products, uh, and I've been down there many, many times, and I've seen the R&D department, and the equipment that they have there uh, to test real world scenarios, vibration uh, and temperature testing is a very big part of what uh, Red Arc do. Now, for Gen 2, we've gone away from the first design or Red Arc's first iteration of the TVMS, and we've replaced it with TVMS Rogue. One of the reasons we've done that is it's very compact compared to the old unit, which was a similar size to the Manager 30 that you see here. But the big part of this is solid state switching. So no fuses, no relays. They're all inbuilt uh, into here. We have a lot more ability uh, to program the camper trailer as the design changes and the user can program the Rogue as well. Not that it's necessary on a Patriot camper, but say if you were gonna install this into your vehicle, it's a really, really clever bit of gear and uh, I think a, a world first for our industry. The Manager 30 is what I would call the heart of the, the electronic system. 
This thing here is the brains. It controls all the functions. This thing's pumping everything around the trailer. So what this is, it's an AC charger, 240 volt or 110 volt if you're in the United States. So this allows you to put 30 amps of charge straight off your wall or shore power into the camper trailer when it's parked at home or if you're at a caravan park. The big advantage is obviously it controls DC charge as well. So what this does is it takes the solar from the solar panels or your DC charge off your alternator from your vehicle um, and that'll control all of that through a shunt. It knows what's coming into your batteries, what's going out of your battery and the best feature of the Red Arc product is just that one screen state of charge at whatever percentage you're at. I'm at 70%, I'm good for the next couple of days. Or I'm at 30%, I need to think about putting charge back into this thing. Um, the system is very intelligent in the way that it's green. Uh, it will always choose solar power off another source. Then it will go to DC if it can't get the solar it needs. And then it will go to AC if you had all three power sources plugged in. So that's a little bit of behind the scenes. Here's the shunt right here, by the way. Um, there's a little bit of behind the scenes on uh, how our wiring harnesses are assembled, put together, um, but the biggest part for us is the quality control from our uh, wiring harness supplier. The next thing I'd like to talk to you all about is obviously the body. I mean, the, the bit that everyone sees and still my most favourite comment is when somebody sees, sees one in the flesh for the first time, whether that's here in the showroom or at a trade show or even on the road when we get stopped at service stations, all the rest of it, that same comment constantly it is so much better than it looks in the videos. Um, and that, to me, means that we've absolutely nailed it. And we put a lot of work into not just the aesthetic look of the camper trailer, it's the textiles and finishes and touches and the functionality of how the user interacts with, with the product. Uh, and that's been a very, very big focus of Gen 2. And that's really pushed us from an Australian manufacturing perspective um, to really strive to procure the best equipment that we can afford in our market and instill the best culture into the staff here uh, to produce that premium product. And it all starts with the body being aluminium and right back from, from actually day one, Patriot number one has a steel body on it. And when I put it on the scales, it was too heavy and that's when we went over to aluminium. And that's when I really started really playing around with the concept of manufacturing an aluminium body which at those times, it just wasn't done. It was unheard of at, at those times. So one of the biggest things when it comes to aluminium, I might just start with saying, we use a 5005 grade, uh, which you'll hear called marine grade aluminium. It's not marine grade. It's got nothing to do with it being more corrosive than anything else. It's a softer material that case hardens when it bends. Typically, aluminium is quite brittle. So if you go with, say, a 5083 material or any of the higher specs, it is a very brittle material, so it doesn't react very well to forming or bending. It, it actually cracks. Um, so we start with a 5005, which gives us the ability to form, bend, and manipulate the material into the shapes that you see behind us. Uh, welding of aluminium is, is far from ideal. Now, the marine industry does it a lot because obviously a boat needs to be fully sealed. And if you're going for a, a fully sealed product, something that has to displace water, there is no way of doing it better than, than welding. But if you go to the flip side and you look at, say, the aerospace in, industry, I've never seen a weld in a plane, ever. And uh, the way that they construct the planes is using uh, structural fasteners and chemical adhesives, yeah? With Gen 1, Gen 1 still had a lot of welding in it. And any of the failures that we saw on the Gen 1 products was typically due to the fatigue and then causing the brittle fracture in the aluminium and typically on the, on the bend lines where the product had been welded. What we've done for Gen 2 is we've spent a lot of time, the engineering team has spent about two or three years in development of a whole new construction technique for an al aluminium bodied product. Um, but what that technique has done is completely eliminated welding in all Gen 2 aluminium products. Above the chassis of every model of Patriot campers that you see now, there is not a single weld in the body. And that's gonna ensure the longevity, but it also ensures the control over the quality of the product and how we assemble it. Because we have such high-tech state-of-the-art equipment now, our accuracy and repeatability on all of the products that make up a Patriot campers uh, body no longer require jigging, fixtures, welding, or heat source manipulation of that material. 
So the laser, for example, the Trump lasers that we have, they have an accuracy and repeatability of plus or minus 0.2 of a millimetre. And our newest asset, the machine that we dubbed the Ferrari in the factory here, uh, is our new Salvinini panel band there. And it's one of that particular model, it's the first one in Australia, but it's one of a handful of, of that level of being able to bend metal in the country. And specifically, it's been brought in uh, to do these bodies and help us achieve our goal of having a very aerospace in inspired design. Now, how we actually assemble all those bodies is we use a mix of those structural fasteners that I mentioned before. Um, for example, uh, if you come in here, you'll see the rivets around the Patriot, which we've put a lot of work with Gen 2 and dissolving the amount of uh, rivets that you can see externally. So for example, this five mil aluminium rivet that you see here, this structural rivet, they have a mandrel internally and they're fully sealed. So they're not like a typical open-ended rivet. But this one rivet right here has a shear force, a breaking strain of two and a half tons per rivet. So one, two, three, four, five, six rivets. Do the maths. Now you would destroy the material before you even moved a rivet. Now, how we've kind of combated with the rivets, the advantage of welding is the two surfaces being welded together, they do become waterproof, yeah? With riveting, you don't have that. So what we have behind every one of those joints is a polyurethane sealant, and it's a sealant and adhesive. So its primary job is to add that chemical strength and bond those two materials or glue those two materials together. Its secondary job is to waterproof all of the panels as they come together. So the lifespan on the new design, the Gen 2 design, um, I would dare say this thing's gonna outlast either you or me. And uh, I'm very, very proud of, of the designs and what my engineering team has achieved. You'll also notice from that functionality point of view, you can see um, we now have form doors in that aluminium material. A big advantage uh, of Gen 2, we focused on the thermal efficiency of the trailer with the amount of electronics inside. Um, we now have insulated doors. Uh, again, so in the, in the colder climates, it'll keep that heat inside, but in the hotter climates, it'll stop that heat from penetrating. Other materials that we use have all come down to years and years and years of camping and refining and making the product better and better. Uh, the stainless steel bench tops, the servery style bench tops with this pattern that you see formed into the 304 stainless steel um, is there for a purpose. In the early days, we just had a 2B finished uh, on, the, on the internal doors. And I found after two or three trips, you had scratches and scuffs and it, it, it looked like a commercial kitchen. So there's those little details like that. There's all that stuff that we've thought of as we've gone through design for manufacture but the primary objective has always been functionality. Powder coating is something uh, that we really pride ourselves on and we have from the start. All of the paint finishes that you'll see right throughout the Patriot range uh, are all powder coated, nothing is wet sprayed. Uh, a couple of reasons for that. Uh, number one is the durability of, of powder. You cannot even compare it to paint. Uh, a painted steel product is like the, the body on your car. If you try and scratch the powder coat, you have to actually get through the layer of powder coat that has been impregnated, for lack of a better word, into the surface of the material. And how we achieve that is uh, every single one of our parts uh, go through a linishing machine and an edge rounding machine, which puts the first key on the surface. Then as it goes through our paint shop, our internal paint shop next door, uh, it gets sprayed with acid. The ace acid then does a finer keying of the material. Then we run it through the first oven, uh, which preheats the material. It dries the part, but it opens the pores in the aluminium. So if you looked at it under a microscope, the aluminium starts generating like these little craters. When it comes into the booth, uh, we have controlled temperature of where we apply the powder. As soon as that powder reacts with that heated material, the powder keys latches itself into the material. It doesn't sit just on top of it. Uh, like, like paint does. So the durability is really the main priority of the powder coating. We get a much flatter finish on the bigger, flatter panels when it comes to powder as well. Uh, in the early days, we did play around with wet spraying, uh, but again, the, the durability was really the primary focus. Canvas is one of the other things I want to address in this, um, this video. Exclusively Australian-made canvas on all of the tents right across the Patriot range, or the integrated tents, I should say. Because say, for example, a toy hauler or an X1N, you can option on whatever you like. 
The only exception uh, to the Australian canvas would be the X2, which still features the peak or awning, which is a, a polyester material. Now, with the Australian made canvas, what makes Australian made canvas so good is it's 35% cotton, yeah? So I think it's 65% polyester. The diner proofing process that this canvas goes, uh, goes through still, again, primary function is to allow the breathability in the canvas. So believe it or not, Australian canvas, it actually breathes, which makes it control condensation in temperature fluctuations much, much better. In the perfect conditions, you will get condensation inside anything. But with Australian canvas, it really, really limits, um, really limits that ability there. It's a 275 GSM that we use right across the range. We try and keep it light. And now almost all of our models have a hard roof over the top. So we don't have any need to go to that uh, heavier canvas. All cotton stitching right throughout. You'll hear the term seasoning uh, used a lot, and especially if you do buy a Patriot. Uh, what seasoning is all about is allowing all of that thread, that cotton thread to swell um, through its first couple of cycles to fill the hole that the needle actually produces uh, when they sew it, when it goes through the machine. So that's what your seasoning process is all about. Manufactured right here in Australia uh, by Australian Materials, another really big focus of Patriot Campbell's. Now maybe the last major component that I, I, I want to really talk about in this video is the introduction of uh, composites into the Patriot Campers range. The composites that, that, that we're using now right throughout all the model ranges are, are very, very advanced in technology as far as you know, composite manufacturing goes. Uh, the part is created in model space and 3D space uh, and then we'll see and see machine uh, the mould, yeah, or the first plug. But it's the infusion technology that's really the, the primary focus for us moving forward. We're constantly striving to make the trailers lighter and lighter and lighter without compromising the strength. And that's where infusion really comes into it. So when they do the layup inside of the mould, uh, they put a bag over the top, a vacuum bag, like a big plastic bag goes over the top, and they pump a predetermined amount of resin into that mould. And then the vacuum ensures that the resin gets pushed into the right places. So for example, in the corners, it'll always be a little bit thicker than on some of the flatter parts or right in the center. Uh, we're also using some other composites, uh, foams and other materials in structural areas inside the lid. Uh, so that's something I'm really proud of and something that we're working on more and more, uh, the introduction of materials that are outside of our comfort zone. But we are ensuring, you know, one of my mantras here and the things I say to my guys all the time, you don't know what you don't know. So we're very, very good at finding the other companies and people around us uh, that are experts in their own field um, that it can ensure that we are pushing the design from a structural point of view in the right direction. There's a run through of, uh, I think, what really makes Patriot Campus tick. You know, the design has always been um, has always been exciting for me, but more exciting than the design has always been the manufacture. Um, I love learning. I love having a team around me that learns. I love pushing the boundaries. I love being different. And I really love creating the barriers to entry for all of our competitors, you know? There's, there is some amazing gear coming out of Australia and some amazing gear coming from overseas as well. But I think as long as we continue to push the boundaries of design and what's possible, um, you know, I'll attack the white elephant. We, we do hear it a lot. We are expensive in the market, you know? We are a premium product. But I think when you see what actually goes into a Patriot camper from products that we use inside, the technology um, that we put in the factory and our real focus on keeping the Australian made dream alive is what this thing has always been about. If we can build it in Australia or if we can buy it in Australia, that's what Patriot Campers is committed to. And whilst I'm at the helm, I think that's what we'll always be committed to. I'm very proud of where the Gen 2 has come. Uh, I think it's an absolutely amazing product. And just over six months now since the Gen 2 uh, launch, we've definitely had our teething issues and we've worked with a lot of customers and we've done a lot of R&D, you know, behind the scenes, we've had the mad rig on the road for seven months, uh, testing, relaying the information back to us. I don't know the amount of kilometers they've done. They have been to some of the hardest places uh, in Australia. 
and they've been behind the scenes doing a lot of that R&D for us. And my father has also been a very, very, very big part of the R&D to get the Gen 2 models uh, to where they are now. So where does Patriot Campers go from here? Well, I think we'll keep refining the design. Uh, we'll keep making it better. We definitely haven't stopped. The Gen 2 is, is at the level that I always dreamed that Patriot Campers could possibly be. Um, but we'll see what, what happens in the future as to where we go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I really hope that it's given Sean a little bit more light on, on what goes into the build of a Patriot Camper and I think what really separates us um, from anything else on the market. So stay tuned for the full factory tour of our new manufacturing facility. I'm really excited to share that um, with existing Patriot Campers owners and potentially anybody who might be looking at uh, becoming part of the Patriot Campers family. Uh, don't forget also, the new retail showroom is now open. We're in full swing. Every model is here on display. Service department is up and going. Uh, all the apparel from Patriot Games and some really, really cool camping accessories. Uh, and exactly the same over in Las Vegas. Las Vegas is about to have its uh, first birthday. The retail store over there, the team in the United States would be more than happy to handle uh, any questions. You can pretty much buy Factory Direct uh, on the other side of the world, which is obviously something that we're, again, very extremely proud of. I'll see you in the next video.